paid. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, good morning. Welcome to worship at the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming. We're so glad that you are all here. My name is Gray Marshall, and I serve as the co-pastor here along with my wife, the Reverend Dr. Ann Marshall, who's way back there waving at you. Uh, we're so glad that you are worshiping with, you, with us today. I hope this hour is going to bring you peace, healing, and transformation, and insurance of God's presence with you today and every day. We have a few announcements that we want to share this morning. Uh, today is Palm Sunday. Palm branches! Woo! Everyone's waving them in here. Um, we are going to be doing this service, obviously here at 9, but later today uh, we are beginning our new service at 1015. Um, and this will be an intergenerational service that we're calling Generations. And it's going to be an opportunity to be outside, to sing, to hear biblical storytelling. Uh, and we're going to also do a palm parade. Unfortunately, our real life donkey is not able to be here today, but we have replaced it with um, a different kind of donkey. So if you show up, you'll see what we're talking about. So come on out at 1015. No need to register. Just come on out and uh, bring your mask and your lawn chair. And it should clear out. So we should be able to do it without it being rained on. So that's exciting. So next up, we have our mission opportunity today. So following that 1015 service, we're going to be putting together power packs uh, for our daily bread. Uh, we're going to be doing that rain or shine as well. So it'll either be outside or in here if it's raining. Uh, this is going to be putting together packs of food to help out our daily bread, one of our mission partners here at PCW, so very excited to be able to do that. Um, so today, Palm Sunday, obviously starts Holy Week here at PCW. This is the beginning of Holy Week, one of the most important weeks in our faith as Christians. So we are going to be doing some special services this week. Uh, so today is obviously Palm Sunday. Uh, on Thursday of this week, we're going to be doing a live Zoom and YouTube service at 7 p.m. We will be having communion at that service, just as Jesus served bread and the cup there at that service back 2,000 years ago. So we encourage you to be the, uh, see that. We got the link sent out Friday, but we will be sending that link out again so that you can be a part of that. Also have your elements ready, the bread and the cup uh, juice ready for that service when you show up. We also are going to be having a Good Friday service on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so be looking for that. That is going to be posted at noon. It is a Presbytery worship service, kind of a Tenenbrae service where they uh, read scripture, have musical offerings. It's a really cool and beautiful service that will uh, kind of hit at that day of Jesus's death. Uh, where we remember his death on the cross for us. Um, and then finally, on Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection, it'll be much like today. We'll have a service at 9, and then at 10.15, just like this week, we're having that 10.15 service outside. So looking forward to, uh, to Holy Week and walking along Jesus to the cross and then through resurrection. So now, friends, let us take a deep breath together. Breathe in and breathe out. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear the prelude. <laughs>
right, will you all please stand and join me in the call to worship? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That's all you got? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. One more time, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. All right, good job. Please be seated. <laughs> Let us hear these words from the Gospel of Luke. After he said this, he went on ahead and going to Jerusalem. And when he came near Bethage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Please just say this The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying this colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees, though, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you that if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, before we begin this, I have a little, I have, I have a request from some of you. So because we're doing this on camera, we would like for some of you to be in front of the camera with your palms, waving them. So if some of you want to stand up during the all glory, laud, and honor and wave your palms in front of the camera, that would be wonderful. So let us now do our procession of the palms. Connie, take it away. Amen. Please be seated. As I get my... Let's see. Yeah, that just got stuck. There we go. Okay. Let us now hear this call to confession. When the parade is over, do we pick up our lives, brush them off, and live in the old way? Or do we, toss our, do we toss our palm branches aside so we can grasp the seductions of the world? As we begin the journey through the holiest of weeks, let us speak the truth as we confess to our God praying together. 
Please join with me in this call and response, litany of confession. Judas, slave of jealousy, where are you? I am here. Peter, slave of fear, where are you? I am here. Thomas, slave of doubt, where are you? I am here. People of Jerusalem, enslaved by mob rule, where are you? I am here. Pilate, slave of expediency, where are you? I am here. Hear the good news. Even Judas was included in the Last Supper with Jesus. Even when we are languishing in the depths, Jesus offers us grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Be at peace and know that God loves you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I ask that you bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that they may be pleasing to you. On this Palm Sunday, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. You think you know, but you have no idea. Now, this was a short tagline to a TV show that I used to watch years ago on MTV, but it still rings true, especially today on Palm Sunday. I think it actually could be the tagline for Palm Sunday. It is about our assumptions about people's lives, about their values, about their desires, these assumptions that are so often wrong and misguided. Take, for example, Anne and I, uh, we had this colleague of ours that we knew from seminary and, and other things, and he was having all of this success professionally. Uh, and Anne and I just assumed, you know, his life was going pretty good. We're like, man, this it's working out for this guy. <laughs> I run into this guy at a conference just a little bit after after all this, and I get talking to him, and I find out his life's kind of a mess. <laughs> Someone could appear to be living a charmed life, but underneath is actually struggling to get through each day. A person could seem from the outside world to be trustworthy, successful, responsible, yet is a trickster, gaslighting and manipulating to get what they want. Our assumptions and expectations are not reality, no matter how much we want them to be. And sometimes we get a rude wake-up call when we realize that. So we have to be careful when we get a little too comfortable with our assumptions about Jesus, because for Jesus' entire ministry on earth, he defied the expectations of just about everybody. He defied the expectations of the religious and political leader, the scholars, his parents, even his own disciples didn't quite get the kind of savior and king that Jesus would be. They had their ideas of what he should be and what he should be doing, but God had a completely different goal in mind. And rarely is this define of expectation so clearly demonstrated than in the text for this morning, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and what happens after that. Because everyone thinks they know what this entrance into Jerusalem means, but they actually have no idea. For the disciples, 
who are the people saying the right things. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. But they mistakenly believe that this is some kind of triumphal moment. A warrior ready to take his place on the throne as an earthly king with political and military might, just like King David was. But Jesus was not going to be a political or military leader using blunt force to bring peace unto the nations. That was not meant to be. Now, Jesus would conquer for sure, but through the cross, through suffering, through weakness, humbleness, and servanthood, and most importantly, he would conquer through love. He would be a true shepherd king, one who would lay down his life for the flock. And knowing what was to come, Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem should have been more like a funeral procession than a victory parade. Now, the Pharisees saw this entry into Jerusalem as intentionally provocative, intentionally provocative towards Rome. All this king talk was poking the sleeping bear that was Rome, possibly destroying the fragile peace that the Pharisees had worked so hard to preserve. And in desperation to hold on to what power, what little power they had, They scream out to Jesus as he's riding on a donkey into Jerusalem. Tell them to shut up or we're going to suffer. Stop stirring up trouble, Jesus. Stop stirring up trouble where there doesn't need to be any. Their fear, their desire to protect the status quo prevented them from seeing what God was doing right in front of their eyes. They assumed he was a false prophet, that he was an insurrectionist in a long line of insurrectionists who would destroy the peace the Pharisees so desperately wanted. Then you had the Roman officials. Now, when they saw Jesus, all they saw was a rabble-rouser in the backwoods country who would be dealt with like all the other rabble-rousers. For Rome, Jesus was just a bug waiting to get squashed by their big foot. So now you can see clearly how all these assumptions And unmet expectations created a deadly cocktail for that first Holy Week. Everyone saw Jesus through their own lens and refused to expand their vision, to let go of their assumptions, so to see God breaking through, bringing amongst them an ever-expanding love. The kind of love that washes the feet of our neighbor, a kind of love that welcomes to the table friends and enemies, a love that refuses to return violence for violence, a love that will sustain through rejection and insult. For me, this is what Holy Week is all about. Putting down our egos, our good theology, our assumptions, our prideful wisdom to walk alongside Jesus through the lonesome valley to the cross. And I pray that this week, God will break through our hardened hearts. Break through the limitations that we have placed on him. Break through the prejudice and bigotry we harbor toward our neighbor to reveal again this Easter, this Holy Week, to reveal again God's big love for us. A love that makes all things possible. 
a love that makes it possible for us to walk alongside Jesus even when he is dealing with the worst that humanity has to offer. Let us walk in that love with one another and our neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? God in highest heaven, how humbly you enter our world to reign. In Christ Jesus, on a dusty road, riding a donkey. Help us to pave the way for your eternal realm with our prayer and our praise, with our service and love until the very stones cry out at the coming of your new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, we pray for our world and ask for your mercy. For all who are suffering and need to know your love that surpasses human understanding. For those who live in violence, especially the people of Myanmar, and those who have lost loved ones to gun violence. We pray for all those suffering from COVID. We pray for the recovery of Tom and Matt, and for all those awaiting test results. We pray for those undergoing treatment for cancer, and for those who are grieving loss of any kind. We pray, Lord, for those whose spirits are downcast and are running out of hope. Be their hope, Lord. We pray for our country, that we as the people may hold our leaders accountable, that our leaders would seek your wisdom and be guided by your love, and that we may all work together to care for all people and creation itself. We give you thanks that you indeed reign in power, that even violence and death do not get the last word, but that you are always at work in the world in resurrection power. We thank you that we are gathered here today, and we pray for those who are gathered with us online. And now we lift our voices together across time and space to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'd like to take a moment and thank you for your offerings to the church. We know that these bring glory to God. If you're here with us in person, there is an offering plate if you'd like to leave your offering on the way out. Um, you may also give by sending a, a check to the church at 225 Wyoming Avenue, or you can go on our website, that top right-hand corner. There's a Give Online button. 
Um, we know that our gifts make a difference in the world, and so we give with thanks to God. Now let us receive this call to Holy Week. Lord, we tell your story. We follow your footsteps. Lead us into Holy Week. Lord, we walk towards Jerusalem, and we wait in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lead us into the holy ground. Lord, we journey towards death, and we hope for resurrection. Lead us into the holy joy. I want you to take some time to reflect on this song that uh, Connie prepared for us, When Jesus Wept, as we prepare for our journey to the cross. As normal for Holy Week, this service is not over. It continues on Monday, Thursday, just as that service will not end until we make it to Easter. So let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for this journey to the cross. journey continues. Go in peace. Amen.